Hey guys, Mike here from Motomule. In today's video, we're gonna work on the beginnings of an IRS drive and suspension setup for the uh, toddler bed go-kart. For this project, I wanna do things a little bit different than I did on the golf cart. The golf cart is a considerably higher budget build than I want this toddler bed to be. When we speak of budgets, I've got a nice little graphic that I want to uh, draw out for you guys. We're all concerned about price, strength, and weight. In a perfect world, we'd like to have all three of these things. We'd like a low price, high strength, and low weight. In reality, most of us can only pick two at any one time. If you want something that is both strong and low weight, it's not gonna be low price. If you want something with a low price, high strength, it's gonna be heavy. You know, if you want something that is low, you know, cheap and light, it's not gonna be strong. So that's just a fun little graphic that uh, I wanted to point out. Basically, you can pick any two of the three. I drew up that little graphic in an attempt to justify what I'm about to show you. For this toddler bed project, I wanna keep the cost low. So with a low cost, yet I want it to be strong, things are gonna be heavy. I really want this toddler bed cart to be both fun and comfortable. And in that vein, I'd like to have the suspension be independent all the way around. So that presented a challenge of designing a rear independent suspension that uh, would be strong enough for this thing and not blow the budget. I scoured the internet looking for CV axles that were cost effective and strong enough to uh, do this. I wanted to find axles that were of a decent length so I could have some decent travel. Basically, the best bang for the buck that I could find were these CV axles intended for the front of a Chevrolet Suburban. I ended up getting two of these axle assemblies and two of the hub bearings, which obviously all this stuff is way overkill and heavy. I was able to get both of these CV axles and both hub bearings delivered to my door for $200, which is a great cost, but uh, I may need to rethink my engine choice. These things are pretty hefty. Okay, we've got a pair of CV axles mount in the vehicle like that. The main goal of this video is to build something that mounts in between these two things that will drive them, you know, so these these will give me the suspension action. I just need to build a spool setup that these flanges can mount to so that a chain can drive them. Okay. These are some parts I had left over from a previous buggy that I built. These parts all came from Surplus Center online. If you haven't checked out uh, that website, do yourself a favor and go uh, check it out. They've got all kinds of uh, surplus parts that are of uh, very good value. So these, these parts go right along with those axles. They're big, overkill, and heavy, but cost effective. So uh, what we have here is a, an inch and three eighths diameter shaft with a keyway in it, a couple uh, flange bearings that fit that shaft, and some sprockets that I had left over. The plan is to use this sprocket to be the drive sprocket, and then I'll take these two sprockets and actually turn them down and drill and tap holes that line up with the inboard flange side of those CV axles. Okay, I'm going to try to mock this up so you get a, maybe a better visual of what I'm going to try to accomplish. So I'm 
So we'll have the shaft. This sprocket, I want to be the drive sprocket. We'll put the uh, flange bearings in here. And then, like I mentioned, I will turn these two sprockets into hubs to mount to those CV axles. So the goal will be to keep this all as narrow as possible. But in reality, you know, I'm going to leave, need some space in here for different things. The, uh, everything will spin from these flange bearings, so that'll be my way to mount this to the frame of the cart. This will be the drive sprocket. When it has its keyway in here, it'll be able to drive and turn this shaft. These two sprockets will be turned down into hubs, drilled and tapped to mount to those CV axles, and when they have their keyways installed, they will also spin with the shaft. So the center sprocket will spin the shaft, these two hubs will spin the CV axles, and we'll have a spool drive that's driven by a chain. All right, you guys always kind of get a kick out of my uh, old Windows XP computer here and how I program parts for the CNC mill. Here you can see that I just kind of drew the part up. I don't have any kind of solids modeling on this old computer or anything. It's all just wireframe. It is 3D, so you know you can kind of look at it from different orientations. All right, so there you can see the wireframe of the part. We'll kind of go over here and you can see some of the operations that the tool path would go through. And then you can even kind of set this thing up and uh, watch it go through the tool path. It's always kind of fun to kind of watch it in virtual reality. I figured you guys would also get a kick out of seeing just how big a nerd I actually am. So I'll uh, shut down this program here, shut off the computer, And you'll see that I uh, made some little linkage things there to fold that screen. And then this keyboard all fits in there and the nice, safe and sound inside a uh, Harbor Freight toolbox. Well, machining those turned out to be a little more of a challenge than I thought. The uh, material is a little harder than mild steel, especially out where the teeth were. So I think that they, uh, when they make these sprockets, they must heat treat it or at least case harden around the teeth or something like that. So the, uh, the first one took over four hours to machine. Um, on the second one, I ended up just taking it over to the chop saw and cutting the teeth off and kind of sanding it into a semi-circle a little bigger than the finished OD. And uh, so that one I did in about three hours. Still a lot of machining. But now we have two flanges that can mount onto the uh, slotted shaft and drive those CV axles.
Obviously you can see where I got this pattern from, I just borrowed it from the end of the CV. So now we have the missing link between the CV axle and the slotted shaft. I kind of stacked all these pieces together and came up with a, what I thought would be the minimum length of what I would need for the shaft material. Well, let's go ahead and put this all together and get a peek at what it looks like. I cut the shaft down to about 8 inches long. Like I mentioned before, I want to keep this whole assembly as narrow as possible. But I do need room in here for mounting flanges that come down and hold these bearings and keep this whole assembly in place. Okay, you can see that I got the uh, flanges that I made now mounted to the CV axle. Over here you can see that there's just bolts coming through because this thing, the CV axle had holes on it. I drilled and tapped holes into the flange that I made. So now I have a CV axle that is set up to work on a slotted shaft. So now these can just slide over here. You put all these pieces together and you end up with a compact, strong, inexpensive, heavy, overkill, chain drive spool set up for a independent rear suspension on a small buggy. Alright guys, we'll end this video here. In the next video, I want to build some kind of apparatus to kind of hold all these pieces together and allow me to test the articulation of this and help me design the A-arm suspension that'll go around this. And then I also want to try to complete a subframe that can mount the whole suspension assembly to that frame that I started on the toddler bed cart. So until next time, smash that like button if you enjoyed this video, share it if you got some useful information here, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.